This is the Podcast Network. Tech it here. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, geeks of all ages, Jeffrey Powers here. Welcome to Geek Smack episode number 268. Stolen iPhones and broken glass. We've got a lot of great stuff in the show today. We're going to be talking about a lot of things that are happening in the tech world. And of course, the big, big thing that we're talking about. Oops, why'd that switch? That's weird. We're going to talk about SIM card security. We're also going to talk about larger iPhones and larger iPads. We're going to talk about the Leap Controller. Did you get you one of those? And uh, tracking, tracking cameras, a whole bunch more. It's Geek Smack. It's brought to you by our friends over at Wirecast. Get yourself this great way to switch around. And, of course, go live on YouTube.com uh, you know, you know, with YouTube.com forward slash Geekazine. We're also brought to you by Roku, Day in Tech History, and GoDaddy.com. So let's get into your Geek Smack for this week. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, geeks of all ages, Jeffrey Powers here. Welcome to Geek Smack, the show where we smack the geek out of you like Bluetooth. We've got a lot of cool Bluetooth items, wearable technology as we talk about. And of course, we're live on YouTube over at youtube.com forward slash geekazine. Think magazine, put in a geek. That's where everything is. Geekazine at gmail.com. Twitter handle is geekazine. Hotline is 608-205-4378. If this is the first time that you've come to the show, thank you very much for being a part of this show. We are here every single Tuesday for your Wednesday consumption. Of course, I took the last couple weeks off, and then, of course, next week I'm going to L.A. for a special event. So this is kind of like the, I guess, kind of like the vacation month for me, Um, although there was no vacation this last month. Uh, Like I said, two weeks ago I went to L.A. to pick up my Google Glass, which is already broke. And then last week I went up to the lake and we just kind of relaxed on a boat, but I couldn't relax totally because on Monday somebody stole my iPhone. Now, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to go into detail because I went into very big detail in the pre-show. So if you go over to youtube.com forward slash geekazine, you'll see Geek Smack episode 268, and then you can go there. You can find out the pre-show. It's kind of like my little pre-vlog Uh, before Geek Smack, which you can go on and and check out there. Um, Some things that happened, like I said, my iPhone was stolen. I'm now on this nice little Windows phone. I actually got this Windows phone last year. Um, I updated it to 7.8. It's doing the job, but I'm missing missing an iPhone. I'm trying to get an Android phone to see if I want to do that, especially with Google Glass, because I can tether to it. Now, the Google Glass, what happened was the touch, the touch screen, it was, uh, the touchpad was gone. I couldn't. I could take a picture by hitting the button on top, but I couldn't do any of the swiping. And uh, I could upload it to my uh, to my Google Plus page, which you can see all the pictures there. In fact, I've got a few pictures that I'm going to show you right now. Um, this is actually the uh, art fair on the square in Madison, Wisconsin. Oops, let's try that. And uh, I'm going to show you a few of those pictures. So we had. I had a lot of fun. That's a video. I didn't, yeah. So. We had a, I had a lot of fun with the pictures, and then I went up on the boat, and uh, we saw a lot of cool stuff. This is a cool wireframe thing that they did up there, and just a lot of cool art. I got a lot of pictures, and I got a lot of cool video there. If you want to check that out, go over to my Plus page, and of course, you can do that by going to geekazine.com. Uh, you can look for Jeffrey Powers up on uh, Google Plus and go from there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, geeks of all ages, let's get into your Geek Smack for this week. And of course, this week, we're brought to you by our friends over at GoDaddy.com. Find your domain, find your website, and you got it, put it together, just like I did six six years ago with Geekazine.com. I remember... I remember searching for my first domain, and the domain discovery tool helped in figuring out Geekazine because that was far from where I was going with my uh, with my website. So, uh, GoDaddy.com been on the site ever since its inception uh, of Geekazine, and uh, of course I use their hosting, I use their SSL certificates, and I use their domain uh, function system. 
Uh, I just uh, I just uh, updated some of the domains that uh, that were about to be expired. So it's very easy to do. All you have to do is log into my account and go through the managers from there. You want to be a part of it? You can save yourself 35%. 35% from uh, GoDaddy.com. All you have to do is enter in the code WOWAZINE. W-O-W-A-Z-I-N-E. WOWAZINE. And you can get yourself 35%. Of course, it helps me. And it saves me a few dollars from when I need to do uh, get a new web domain or I need to uh, update my existing domains. You know, Geekazine, Dorkazine, Sportazine, TVazine, uh, and a new azine that's coming down the pike, but I haven't, I'm not going to talk about it just yet. So check it out over at GoDaddy.com. All right, let's get into your into the news for the week. First of all, we're going to start over at the Geekazine news area. The iPad is, there's been some rumors of some iPads that are out that are a little bit bigger. A possible 13-inch iPad, a possible 4.7-inch iPhone or a 5.7-inch iPhone. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, basically, they're testing out some sizes, so there are a couple uh, prototypes out in the wild of larger iPads and iPhones. I think what they're thinking of is with iPads, there's a lot of uh, cash registers, POS terminals out there, a lot of kiosks out there that are using 10-inch iPads. And by switching them to 13-inch iPads, they'll have a little bit more real estate to put buttons down to have people uh, you know, uh, make bigger text so people can read the, the messages better. And uh, like I said, more real estate for more buttons. Um, so I'm wondering if this is actually going to be for the cons uh, not for the consumer model, but for the corporate model. Uh, to even have something on the wall or have something, you know, like I said, a cash register or something like that. iPhones, we uh, ever since I had my iPhone 5, yeah, I wanted to have a little bit bigger screen. And so, you know, even Steve Wozniak said it would be really nice if that screen was a little bit bigger. So uh, I, I totally understand the 4.7 inch and the 5.7 inch uh, models of iPhone. I'm not, I'm not totally sure about three versions of iPad, but, you know, like I said, when it comes to uh, corporate models, they need something a little bit different, and this might fit into that need. So will it happen? I don't know. It's just rumor right now, and they're just testing. So we'll see what happens. We'll keep you abreast of the situation. If you want to read more, go over to news.geekazine.com for that. Wearable technology is here, whether you like it or not. It's coming, and it's here. And one of the things that we've got here, um, if you know what near-field communication is, it's basically when you come close to an item, it actually reacts. Like, for instance, uh, there was an app on my, on, my, on my iPhone at the time, now it's gone, that are called Erasma. So basically when I, I, I pointed the phone at something that Erasma had, an augmented reality situation would pop out. Maybe a game would pop out, maybe... Some extra information would pop out. Maybe a video would, would come onto my phone or something like that. Well, near-field communications can do a lot more than just that. If you've got the right type of technology in a door lock, for example, you can use near-field technology to unlock a door. You can use near-field technology to, uh, to uh, contact somebody else or actually get information from something like a phone or something like that um, instead of having to pull out your phone. That's you know uh, wearable technology like the Pebble. That's a perfect example. Well, there's a Kickstarter out there that I want to show you. It's called the NFC ring. And basically, it's just that. It's a ring that you will wear, and uh, it'll be a near-field com communications. And when you have other technology attached to it, like, for instance, a door lock, it could actually unlock the door for you. Um, it could do a whole bunch of stuff that you don't, that you don't need to be close to do it, which is really cool. So... Uh, you can unlock a smartphone or tablet. So instead of having a four-digit combination, you could just walk up your phone. As long as your ring's close by, you just put the ring on, or you just uh, pick up the phone like this, and instead of typing the security code, you've, you've already done it with your ring. That's pretty cool stuff. So it's a Kickstarter, and it's out in England, so they're looking for... It's 36,000 pounds, which I believe is somewhere on the, on the I'm, no, I'm sorry, they, they were looking for 30,000 pounds, which is somewhere on the line of 50 to $55,000. They've already reached the goal, but you still have opportunities to be a part of that. 
So check it out. I'll have the link in the show notes of that Kickstarter. All right, new Ford system is going to help you uh, if, uh, well, help the police help you warning you when something's coming. And this is actually really cool. Um, this is over on foxnews.com. Basically, if, uh, if a, an emergency vehicle, such as a police car or an ambulance, is uh, going down the road for an emergency, they'll have a special tone that they'll be pitching out. And apparently Ford will hear that tone. The Ford car will hear that tone. And then, I don't know, it'll be blinking, it'll turn on, it'll warn you, it'll say, hey, emergency vehicle behind you, move to the side, and go from there. I think this is great. Not as much needed in, in some places like Madison here because of the fact that, you know, that you can pretty much get through the streets very easily. But, you know, if you're in New York or L.A. and you're in close to a traffic jam and all of a sudden there's an ambulance about 100 yards away trying to get through so it can save a life, then you have time to pull over so that emergency vehicle can get through. So pretty cool stuff. If you want to check out more on that, it's over at foxnews.com, and you can check it out there. Of course, everything is in the show notes. All you have to do is go over to geekazine.com and uh, the, go to the show notes uh, for that specific le link. Let's move on from there. Let's go over to engadget.com. Did you get your Leap Controller? Uh, a few months ago, they talked about this special device. It's, it's a really cool device. It, it works like this. You basically have this little square here, and you put it down, and then you move your hand over, and your hand becomes the controller. So if you hold it like a pen, you can write like a pen. You can actually even hold a pen or a pencil in your hand and do that. But you can do you know can do pinches. You can uh, widen out. I didn't I didn't make my purchase of the Leap Motion Controller. A lot of uh, a lot of the tech people have got their uh, Leap Motion controllers, and of course they're using it right now. But there's a nice review over on Engadget.com for the uh, Leap control Motion controller. Um, this one looks like it's hooked up to a MacBook. So a new way to actually think about uh, how you can control your screen by this little controller right here. I know it looks like a four-port USB hub or something like that. It's very small. And I should have, I should have got, I should have purchased it when I had the time. So, um, but you know, if you want to check it out, go over to Engadget.com. They have the full review there. Moving over, uh, over to MacWorld.com. Congratulations to the iTunes Store, one billion podcast subscriptions. Now, I'm a podcaster, so I'm, I like to keep on top of the space. Since 2004, this is how I, this is how I figured it. Since 2004, one billion subscriptions to podcasts. Now, that means that some podcasts have come and gone. They have about 250,000 podcasts, active podcasts, on iTunes. About 8 million subscribed, or I'm sorry, not subscribed, 8 million downloads. I got it right here. Let me, uh, let me look it up. 100 different languages, 250,000 unique podcasts, and uh, there was 8 million. What was the 8 million on that? Anyway, the whole point is I, I, I kind of broke it down. It turns out to be, if there's, if there's 1 billion subscribers, that means of, on average 4,000 subscribers per podcast. Now, I know that there's probably not 4,000. I don't know if there's, I, I can't tell how many subscribers are to Geeksmack, or the audio version or the video version. I do have two versions on iTunes, an audio version and a video version. And you can, down, you can listen to or watch either of the versions. Well, you can't watch the audio version. You can't, you can listen to the audio uh, version. The, the whole point is that you can, yeah, I know I'm crazy now. The whole point is that you can download, you can subscribe to your choice. And with that, I should have about 8,000 subscribers. But I thought about it. It's like to get about 4,000 subscribers for a show, that means you got to have about 40,000 people that pass through. So I'd say about 40 in, in the last five years, uh, more than 40,000, I'd say about 100,000 people have passed through my show and watched or listened to it at one point in time, which isn't too bad. It's still, uh, it's still a low number, but it's not a bad number from there. So uh, this is a very promising number for podcasters. I'm really happy to uh, report that $1 billion. Congratulations, Apple, in helping us podcasters get the word out as well. Let's move on from there. We're going back over to newsgeekazine.com. Flipboard, let me just close this out here. Flipboard is eyeing on the desktop. Apparently today, a new version of Flipboard has come out to the web. And that new version, let me see if I can, uh, oops, 
Let me see if I can call it up here. So Flipboard is now available on your PC or your Macintosh. They had some very rudimentary pages up at first. So let's bring it up here. Oops, we'll go back here. So, and it looks like Flipboard is down right now. Look at that. A lot of people wanting to get on Flipboard, I guess. Reload. Nope. Nope. Not going to do it. So they must be having some problems right now. So anyway, uh, Flipboard is coming up. Uh, I, I did some rudimentary. They had a couple examples on there. If you've got a touchpad, uh, like the MacBook uh, multi-touch, you can actually swipe up and that'll flip pages. If you don't have that functionality on your uh, Windows machine or your older MacBook, you can use the arrow buttons left to turn the page, right to turn back, and, uh, and go from there. So a lot of ways to control it. It's a great app. I use it on my iPad a lot. I'm really happy. Well, not right now because it's got a server area, but once they come up, get up and going, I'm going to be really happy that Flipboard is on the PC. I'll use it a lot more, and I'm really excited about that. So check that out over at news.geekazine.com. All right, let's move on from there. Going over to redshark.com. This is Jennifer showed me this this uh, this video. This is a camera that can follow a specific item as just completely followed. So they have this ping pong ball, and they're just throwing it around left and right and up and down and all around. And uh, let's get to a part where I can show you here. So yeah, it's just moving it around. And it's just following it. And I'm not going to show too much because then we got some copyright issues going, blah, blah, blah. So basically, the camera, if I had like, like I have a flash drive here, it would follow the flash drive if I set this flash drive to be the thing to be followed. Not only can it do that, but it can also put a message on here. Now, think about this. The, the, uh, the entrepreneur in me thinks about this all the time. You could put that into sports. And then you could you could actually follow a quarterback or a running back. You could have on each on each uh, person, and not only that, you could also have the quarterback sponsored by Outback Steakhouse. And all of a sudden, you see a little Outback logo on on his on his uh, forehead on the helmet, and you can actually see him go through the plays because that camera is following that specific helmet, that sp specific person. So this is this is really cool technology when it comes to any type of videographer out there. So if you want to check out more, we got that over in the show notes. Go over to geekazine.com and click on the show notes. All right, that does it for this uh, part of the Tech Smack part. We're going to get in the Geek Smack part, but we got a brand new section of Geek Smack. It's called Geekedia of the Week, and it goes a little something like this. And basically, Geekedia is an item that, uh, you know, a movie, a book, something that's geeky, that kind of reminds you, say, hey, you know, maybe I should watch this. Maybe, maybe we should watch a movie like this or read this book or, or play this game. So this week I'm going to start where, uh, with one of the movies that is pretty much my go-to movie whenever I just need to uh, laugh. And that's the movie Real Genius, starring Val Kilmer, starring Gabriel Jarrett, um, and uh, the third name is uh, Martha Cool. Coolidge, um, just you know, I have so many, so many memories of that movie. Uh, it's it's amazing. It's basically about these these geniuses that go to this specific school to get a higher education, but in the meantime, they're actually building something for their professor who's trying to make money off of this uh, an actual laser system, and they find out that they're doing something kind of evil. And then they try and, and root around it. A lot of scientific stuff. In fact, one of the things that was in the movie, the popcorn scene, Mythbusters, of course, dispelled that myth uh, on, on an episode. I think it was last year's Mythbusters, so you can check that out there. But Real Genius, uh, go over to geekazine.com to the show notes, click on the link, and of course, that'll help Geekazine keep the lights on. And then, of course, you can also watch it. It's on Prime, so if you have a Prime membership, you can watch it on your Roku on, on your over-the-top television device and enjoy Real Genius. It is the Geekedia Media of the Week.
And of course, this section is brought to you by the Day in Tech History. It's the uh, it's the other one of the other podcasts I do. The Day in Tech History is a full rundown of tech history for you, for your friends, for everybody else that wants to be in the know of what happened on this day in tech history. Today, being Tuesday, we had some car tech history. The first car ever was uh, developed, uh, brought out back in 1886. Gottlieb Dionfer, I believe is how you pronounce the name. But then 17 years later, the first Model A car by Ford came out, which was the car that would be a it would be something that would the, the masses would use and it is pretty cool got a lot of other tech history go over to the day in tech history the best part about day in tech history is you can now get it on your android you can now get it on your uh, iphone through podcast box and you can download it now just this week download it on the windows store and uh you can check that out and i got links to that all over at day in tech history.com all right, let's go back over to Geek News. News.geekazine.com. Tumblr has blocked the porn, or the, I'm sorry, not the porn, the adult pages on Tumblr. Um, they're not affecting, you know, a couple months ago we talked about Marissa Mayer saying that, well, we're not going to mess with, uh, with Tumblr at all. The, you, if you've got an adult page, you're still going to have an adult page. We're not going to do anything there. But what they did do is they took the search away from those pages. Now, a lot of people have been complaining about it, but the reality is they haven't done anything to the blogs themselves. So she's right, unfortunately. But the bad part is that you now can't search for anything uh, through the tag. So no, no, not even a reason to tag anything. I'm hoping that they're going to start and they're going to create some sort of alternate search for adult uh, blogs out there. But that hasn't happened yet. They even have uh, an, a page, NSFW. So if you go to tumblr.com forward slash NSF, I'll have the link that goes to the link that goes to the link. And basically it just says adult blogs will appear in mobile apps and for your followers. So you've got to promote your page kind of outside of Tumblr and say, go to my adult page here and go from there. I like it. I, you know, I, I don't like the idea of w w the days where we'd search and all of a sudden we'd have the first five links would be porn. It was it was getting very annoying. And of course, Google's new new uh, new path to get rid of adult sites out of Google search and have a safer search. I like that idea. Uh, all the triple X sites are in their area. They have their own search site. I don't know what it is, but I know there is a search site out there for them. So. I'm hoping that Tumblr will index that for those types of pages, those types of search engines, and then leave that out for Google. So everybody's happy. But, and yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit upset that they took it out, but I'm really happy at the same time. So if you want to read more on that, go over to geekazine.com for the news section. All right. There are three laws out there, and this is over on mothers, motherjones.com. Jennifer also found this one for me. There are three laws out there that are kind of outdated. The first one, the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. The second one is the DMCA, the D D Digital Millennium Copyright Act. And, of course, the third one is the Electronic Communications Privacy Act. All three of them have nomenclature in there. I guess that's the right word. Yeah, nomenclature in there. I'm going to call it the right word. That basically is outdated. So what they're suggesting is, hey, we should turn around and we should relook at this stuff and we should add stuff to this copyright. Make sure that, you know, there isn't a loophole in there that's going to get uh, that's going to get us in trouble here or there. Um, and of course, not step on our First Amendment rights. A really good read if you are into the legal area of of the Digital Rights Act. Go over there. It's over at motherjones.com. Let's move on from there. LG has uh, said that they're going to be bringing curved TVs. Whoops. Where did that go? There it is. Curved TVs coming to the United States. Oh, I see what's going on there. Very interesting page. Curved TVs coming to the United States. I don't think I can show that there because it will not. Let me, let's do this. Curved TVs coming to the United States. It's going to take about, I yeah, said about four times, $15,000. And you get a 55-inch television curved. So you got like a little bit of an IMAX experience on your TV. You set up your home theater. 
so you get you know watch the movies you want um but once again it's gonna cost you fifteen thousand dollars to do if you want to read look at that that's over at wsj.com is where i pulled that head, headline from Going over to TechCrunch.com, Apple's confirmed that the Dev Center was breached. Uh, there were some people noticed that the Dev Center went down uh, for a little bit. I believe it was yesterday or two days ago. No, it had to have been more than three days ago because they said three days of silence as Apple basically said, hey, we've got some problems. We're working on it. And some people got some emails saying, you know, your your password was changed. Did you want to change it or a change request was in the works. Uh, if this wasn't you, please click here. So if you did get one of those, make sure that you uh, you check your developer account. Now, this is only for developers. If you have a regular iTunes account, it did not affect you. It did not find any credit card numbers. It did not find any personal information, but they did get into Apple's systems and, uh, and find a break. Apple has fixed the problem, so it's not a big deal. Only if you're a developer, you might want to change your passwords anyway. So that's over at TechCrunch.com. Check that out there. All right. You know, th we already talked about one piece of wearable technology. This is another piece of wearable technology. It's also a ring. And it's actually pretty cool. It's called the Orb. And the cool thing about this ring is it turns and becomes a Bluetooth headset. So there it is, the picture right there if, you, if you're watching the video. Uh, it's a Bluetooth headset, but if we go down, you'll actually see the ring itself, the orb, which you can wear on your finger. This, so this is actually perfect because you want you want to have a Bluetooth headset, but you know when you're done with it, you don't want it sticking in your ear. So you can just take it off, flip it back, put it on your finger, and be done. It's a perfect engage, engagement ring. I don't know. <laughs> uh, there, the prices are pretty good on this. One hundred twenty nine dollars for the and for the deluxe version is about one hundred seventy five. Uh, I'm not sure what the deluxe version is. I think it's, oh, it's it's fitted with e-ink display and other things like caller ID, calendar reminders, and text messages. So you can look at your ring. Oh, we got a text message. What does it say? Should have put a ring on it. What can you do? Check it out. It's over at designcot.com. The orb ring. It's pretty cool. Lots of cool wearable technology, and we're going to see a lot more. In fact, I, I saw something last week about a shirt that actually had some sort of wearable technology in it too. Remember two years ago, Netflix and uh, and what they tried to do, they tried to split up the company and then they tried to sell the DVD division with Quickster and everybody was like, are you serious Netflix? And their stock went from here, $295 a share by the way, down to here, which is $66 a share. And I thought, you know, Netflix, three, six months, done. Well, I was wrong. Netflix shares are back up. Now, this article, it's over at Reuters.com. Basically, they're saying that the or that Netflix didn't hit its expectations. But the reality is their expectations pretty much almost put them right back to where they were before that whole debacle happened two years ago. So they added about 630,000 streaming customers in the United States in the second quarter. They wanted 700,000, so they, they missed the mark. They're about 4% lower than what they wanted to be. But their stock is at $265 a share, $30 lower than what it was two years ago. So I'm, you know, congratulations to Netflix. I'm still not a Netflix subscriber. I didn't like the way that they were updating their, their, their libraries. I don't watch kids' TV, so it doesn't appease me. And they didn't have content. I really wanted to see something. Maybe they showed a movie a week. So I get a new movie on Saturday, uh, something a little bit newer, and then that would be around for a week and then moved off, and then another movie comes on. I would have been perfect with that, but there was never new content, and everything was so old that I wasn't really watching it. Amazon has a lot of new content, which is why I like Amazon's Prime. In fact, uh, I missed Under the Dome last night. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to watch it on Amazon Prime today. Now, granted, I missed Arrested Development. I missed uh, the other, uh, the uh, the Kevin, uh, what's his Kevin, uh, not Kevin Pollock, but uh, anyway, that that movie, The House of Cards. That's what it was thinking of. I missed that those shows, but I don't really miss it. 
So congratulations to Netflix. I, I think that's a great a great jump up to where they were. But uh, I can't believe that they got there again. And uh, they, they did a good job. So hopefully they don't do anything stupid like try and sell the DVD site again and, and ruin everything. And you only get one chance to do that. Don't do that twice. <laughs> I'm just saying. So anyway, let's move on from there. Let's go over to vicespy.com. You might have seen this animated GIF on Google+. Plus. I know I've seen it a few times. But it's a really cool table. It's magnetic. And it kind of looks like something from the 70s or 80s coming from a doctor's office um, in the lobby or something like that. What's really cool about this, I'm gonna go, and this is the animated GIF. The guy's just pushing down on the block, and the block just kind of pushes down and then pushes right back up. There's a mag, it's, it's, it's done by magnets where they separate just enough so the table stays together but when you put something on top of it, it cushions it down. So you could actually sit on this and maybe feel a little bit more comfortable. Um, I don't know if you can remove the blocks, what happens if you do. But it's a pretty cool, it's called Rock Paper Robot. And it's a float table. You can check it out. And we've got the link over at vicespy.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, geeks of all ages, that does it for the second half of Geekazine. We're going to get into the main subject here. We're going to talk about SIM cards. Now, uh, there is uh, what's happening is we're finding out that SIM cards aren't very secure. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute, and we're going to do that then. We're gonna, we'll be right back. <laughs> You're watching Geek Smack. Oh, yeah, I am a couple weeks off on this. You're watching Geek Smack. My name is Jeffrey Powers. If you have any questions, Geekazine is my Twitter. And then, of course, Geekazine at gmail.com. We'll be right back. With over 700 channels to choose from, the Roku should be part of your entertainment center, and the price is great. You got channels from Amazon to Netflix to Hulu Plus, and of course you can add to your pay channels like HBO Go. You also have Disney for the kids. You have tons of ways to entertain people. Not only movies, but you can also have great games, such as Pac-Man, such as Galaga, and of course, Angry Birds. And that's all through the Roku Entertainment System. Now let me show you one channel that's in particular near and dear to my heart. And that's over here, the techpodcast.com channel. If you go to the techpodcast.com channel, you go into the video, and you go to tech news, you will find not only iPad 365, but Geek social media feed, and then of course the show Geek Smack all on your Roku right there. So check Prices start at $50 to no more than $100 for all this great entertainment. Do that by going over to geekazine.com forward slash Roku. That's geekazine.com forward slash Roku. You get yourself a Roku player and start watching movies, start watching content, and start playing Angry Birds over at geekazine.com forward slash Roku. Been an interesting week for me on security and stolen phones and broken devices but there's another issue we need to address in security it's your sim card in your phone according to a company sr labs the sim card the card that the phone carriers put in your phone to activate on a network is using 56-bit dec encryption this technology basically developed in the 1970s Hackers can get in your SIM card using an errant SMS message and Java technology to pull whatever is on that SIM card. Now, this can be contacts, this can be passwords, and it can be other information you may have on the card. You think you're safe. However, over 750 million phones are open to this attack. That's one in eight phones alone. SR Labs is going to show their findings at the Black Hat Conference on July 31st. They're going to recommend SMS firewall and a better encryption in SIM in future phones. Now, I don't know if it's gonna be 128-bit or 256-bit encryption, but we gotta assume that updated encryption means phone carriers are gonna to have to update their SIM identification programs. Most likely, that would be a software upgrade and probably even a hardware upgrade. If they were to upgrade this today, we would see probably a four-year process in this happen to clear out all old phones, because I'm not exactly sure if we can actually put in a 128-bit encryption SIM 
into today's phones if there's a software fix for that. The end result is we might have, uh, in about four years, uh, that's when phones from 2013 might not even work on a carrier simply because of the upgrade. Now, although phones such as iPhones and Androids don't really rely on SIM cards to hold this data, this could be a gateway for the phone itself. We at Geekazine wholeheartedly back SR Labs' plan to update SIM card technology and get into the 128-bit encryption for everything so we have a very secure phone, a very secure mobile device, and even a brick when somebody tries to steal your phone like they did with me. Now, fuck that. So, anyway, what do you think? Do you think that uh, we should worry about SIM technology? Do we, should we get rid of SIM technology, get something else for phones? So, uh, so we do have a better encryption uh, process on there, and we have more secure phones. What do you think? Let me know. Twitter me over at Geekazine, of course, Geekazine at gmail.com, and the phone line is 608-205-4378. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, ge geeks of all ages, that is it for this episode of Geek Smack. We'll hopefully smack the geek out of you, and if you have any questions, feel free to contact me, because I will answer any questions that you come up with. And uh, we'll be, like I said, we won't be back next week as I'll be in L.A. We'll, we'll be back in two weeks with another episode of Geek Smack, and I will smack the geek out of you. Till then, you guys geek out. My name is Jeffrey Powers. Thanks a lot for watching. You guys take care. Subscribe over on YouTube.com forward slash Geekazine, and, of course, subscribe to the RSS feeds. I appreciate it much. Thanks a lot, and take care.